Hey, what's up, YouTube? I'm back again with another review. Today, we're going to be, or I'm going to be showing you guys how to assemble your M1C helmet or the Paratrooper M1 helmet. Now, to begin with, first thing that you need is your M1 helmet, as you can see. It's the normal, standard USGI one. And then, you'll need the liner, the M1 helmet liner, or the M1C liner. It has these flaps that hang down right here with the buckles on them and it has its own chin strap and that's how you can tell that it's an M1C paratrooper liner. The stamp, not sure how well you guys can see that on the webbing there, probably not at all but you know. Anyways it says liner parachutist helmet and then it has a national stock number and it has a DLA number of 1983. Meaning that this is going to be, this is going to be one of those weird ones that doesn't quite fit right in that M1 helmet. Then you got your cat's eye band. You got your sweat band. Now this is an unissued one. It says band uh, or headband adjustable SPO 1994. So this one would originally be designed for a Kevlar helmet. But we're going to be putting it inside an M1 helmet. And then you got your ERDL helmet cover. Could be any M1 helmet cover really, well depending on the era. Then these unissued ones do not include a nape strap, so you will need that. And something not seen uh, a whole lot is the um, helmet pad. I would just sit in the back here sit in the back of the liner so oh and the most important thing is its own chin straps now you can tell that this one is a parachutist one because it has this snap right here and the other one I've already pre-attached so you need to loop it like so so that's actually gonna be the first thing that I'll do let me just get this stuff out of the way for you here and to help me do this, I got one of those old Leathermans. You're going to need something like that. So, like I said, what you want to do is after you already have your M1 helmet on, you want to adjust it right so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't uh, uh, end up being too short when you try to put it in there or when you try to loop it on. So basically what you want to do is you're going to bend this like so and then you fold it back down like that. And then what I'll do from here, we'll use the, the Leatherman to, uh, to cinch all this down real nice and tight. So like you can see, the uh, side with the snap is facing towards the outside. And then it's just a matter of clamping this down even a little bit more, and then clamping in those side pieces like that, and like that. So pretty much should look like that. Pretty simple. Now, <coughs> for the M1 helmet, or for the liner, let's go ahead and throw the cover in there. And the cat's eye band, we won't need that till later. <clears throat> so, not everyone's gonna have this pad. I managed to find a guy selling one on eBay. Um, I guess I'll throw that on there first. So the first thing that you need to do is um, put in the uh, the nape strap, and there's these little buckles right there that you just gotta slide through, and then it's kind of hard to do this because it's such a tiny strap 
most of these M1s, that most of the liners that you'll come across won't even have these in there, just because of how much of a pain in the butt they were, and because at the end of the day, in my opinion, they didn't really, uh, they didn't really do much. Um, at least as far as comfort for me, I never really cared for them. But uh, since that uh, this is a completion video of showing you how to assemble it completely, then I definitely want to go ahead and do that. All right, so you can see that they're attached like that. Now the next thing is going to be real tricky. So you got your your helmet pad. And you just slide it through like so. And depending on how high or how low you adjusted this will determine on how high or low then it hangs out from the, the back of the M1 helmet. So the rest of this you guys probably aren't going to be able to see too good at all just because the helmet pad is in the way. But you gotta really make sure that it's nice up and close to the um, that the pad is nice up and close to the to the liner it just it will fit better with the um, sweatband after you put that in there because I mean sure these these helmet pads aren't too common but you you definitely have your uh, sweatband in there and then it just sort of sits there like so. Now like I said, um, you can tighten the strap down. That Actually, you know what, I'll just go ahead and try and do that. This is, like I said guys, if you guys ever fiddle around with one of these things, then you'll know what a pain in the ass it really is. But I definitely want to make this video full and good. So I'll just do my best on it. And I'll tighten this one too. Why not? Let's just tighten them all. So, we got that installed. Now it's time for the sweatband. Let's go ahead and tear that open. Unissued since 94. And then, these 90s dated ones um, are just like the normal M ones. Um, so it just has like that normal buckle that's kind of hard to undo and then except it also has the velcro and then instead of cotton it's nylon and then you can see it's sized small medium large not too sure if they ever had an extra large though um pretty much how you're supposed to adjust these things you just put it on and then let's see here Maybe I should have used a used one. It would have been a little bit better. So I think that's about good enough. Pretty sure I'm going to get a haircut soon. Well, I don't know. I've been thinking about letting it grow out. But um, whether I let it grow out or get a haircut, then I definitely need to uh, readjust this. So when you put these things in there, it's not going to go like this. You want to, it to go up like so. So let's go ahead and throw them on there. And like I said, this, I remember these ones just always being a constant pain in the ass to install. I just. Alright, so there's the first one. First one down, five more to go. Looks like it clipped and then it came back out. There we go. Kind of curious to see how these ones in the back are going to go because the helmet pad. Hope I don't have to readjust anything. These um, sweatbands, the one that I'm using now, they really weren't around for a whole lot. I mean, 
they continue to get used but once the once the the ones with the velcro replace these ones um, it was just game over for these ones because the other ones are well, guys there's my pager remember I'm a volunteer fireman I have to go let's continue this later hey what's up YouTube I'm back from the call um, well uh, or well in between filming I also decided to just go ahead and throw on the uh, sweatband I remember when I left I wasn't quite done with it yet but anyway so here is what the complete M1C parachutists liner should look like you have your nape strap you have the uh, crown pad or the back of your head pad the nape pad what neck pad whatever you want to call it you have the sweatband and most importantly you have this chin strap so I'll go ahead and throw it on for you guys show you how uncomfortable it really is with the pad um, pretty much I'm not sure if you guys could tell at all but it pretty much forces your head this way so it's not comfortable for me but um, there's a joke somewhere in there that they always say uh, jumping from a uh, um, perfectly good airplane I suppose I'd want something better than nothing Oh, so actually with the pad, it looks like this is a little bit too small. I'm going to have to readjust it, maybe. Alright. I think it's... There we go. So, here's what it looks like with the chin strap, or while you're wearing the chin strap. And this chin strap pretty much just helps keep... Um, your uh, your liner separating from your M1 while you're you're jumping, and then of course you got the little pad sticking out the bottom there. So that that's what a complete M1C liner should look like if you're doing um, post Vietnam. I, I want to say that these came out around the uh, late 70s. And then for the M1 or the shell itself, already got the chin straps installed, so that's great. And then. Let's go ahead and throw on the ERDL cover. I picked this cover up at the last gun show um, from a, a guy who I buy from every once in a while. Um, it seems like it's kind of shoddy with him where sometimes he'll have really great stuff and then sometimes not eh. This time he was selling these uh, a whole bunch of these ERDL RDF. I don't remember seeing any woodland helmet covers for a dollar each, so I picked up a bunch. And this is probably one of my favorite ones. I don't know, I just, I think it's conditioned or weathered perfect. I won't make it too fancy, but enough to where you guys will get the point. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is the early 80s M1C liner, so they actually, uh, specialty uh, plastics products company actually made these a little bit larger. Um, I'm not sure why. I think, honestly, because uh, these did see service along with the PASGAT helmet or the personal armor system ground troops. I think the company just thought, well, since these are about to be replaced anyways, what's the point? But, um... Anyone's dated before the 80s fit perfect inside M1s. This one will not. It will hang out and it's going to look goofy. But that's just how they wore them. So installing it is pretty simple. You just slide it in. And then you got your snaps here and your snaps here. And snap it there. And then snap this one like so and that also helps keep the um, the shell separating from the liner by those putting those snaps in there so then you have two chin straps and this is what your complete M1C liner or M1C helmet will look like so like I said it's sticking out very very bad and that's guys that's just they just made them that big I don't know why um, it kind of sucks, but I mean, eh, 
Um, a guy told me on a Facebook group that he used a rubber mallet to knock it in there, but uh, he also said that um, you're probably never going to get it out uh, after you do that just because of how stuffed it is. I'll go ahead and throw it on for you guys to show you what the whole getup looks like. It's definitely not as comfortable as my PSGT parachutist helmet configuration, which I honestly don't know if I've ever shown you guys that before. So I guess, uh, I, guess I know what to make for the next video too. And then it looks like I'm going to have to readjust this chin strap pretty good but anyways you get the point so like I said yeah I'm gonna have to definitely make this uh, side longer but then for this uh, chin strap on the shell you would just clip it like you normally would and then you'd also have this chin strap too but so that's what the M1C helmet this is how to put it together and this is what it should look like I hope you guys enjoyed this video um, I hope you guys learned something new about this if you guys have any questions go ahead and let me know and have a nice day